Okay, so um, exporting European food and beverage products to South Korea market. Um, this is specifically for uh, Lithuanian products. Okay. So uh, I'll move on to talk about my own uh, food and beverage story. All these information I've mentioned before previously, um, those are readily available on any websites, uh, any information, but and I, I don't think you guys are here to you know, listen to the facts that you can also access, but you're here to listen to uh, my personal experience, something I can share personally with you guys, something that you cannot get online. So um, we, I'm, I'm, I'm going to spend a lot more time on uh, talking about this part uh, rather than the data before. Okay. A um, little bit about myself. I was born in Korea, like I told you before. I grew up in New Zealand. Um, I got married in New Zealand. I moved to Indonesia since then. Um, I've been here more than a decade. And currently, I'm in sweet potato business, like Lena mentioned before. Um, sweet potato from Indonesia. And um, I export that to Korea. A um, little bit of, about my background. Um, I've been in this company, Seed Origin, uh, in, for seven years. Uh, sweet potato, we focus on sweet potato farming and manufacturing and exports. Um, we, have, we recruit 200 people and we generate about $1.2 million a year. Um, I run this business with my partner. His name is June. Um, and we've gone through a lot of things. Um, started off very small, started off very small, uh, very in a very difficult, uh, challenging situation. And um, we've managed to survive all these years. And I guess we can call ourselves, we've stabilized, I guess we can say that, yeah. Um, I did four years of work for Well Legal in South Korea. Um, this was one of our projects we did. Uh, it's a sweet potato porridge brand. I, that might sound a little bit weird, but it's not so weird in Korea. Um, so three of us, uh, worked together in this project. We generate about $600,000 a year. Um, but with the business, uh, was, it was on an increase and um, somebody offered to buy the, the, the brand. So it was acquired by a local trader in Korea. Um, we've won um, some awards uh, in Sile China uh, for innovative product, um, which I will Talk to you, I'll tell you why it was an innovative product later in, in other slides. Um, before that, I worked uh, about four years in food and beverage industry in hospitality when I was in New Zealand before uh, moving to Indonesia. Um, so with this background, I can safely say that I have um, in-depth experience in food and beverage industry. Okay. Um, I'm a little bit embarrassed to talk about myself, so I'm going to skip. I'm going to just move forward. Okay. Um, and I have a very embarrassing picture of myself here. <laughs> okay, but as, uh, you Sorry, know, I was Andrew, gorgeous. Yeah. This picture is amazing. The the view the view at the back is gorgeous. Uh, not my hair, not my not my face. I was, oh man. <laughs> okay. Um, some of some of you might be wondering why sweet potato. Why you know like what why sweet potato you know you're in, you probably have other things that you could do why sweet potato so um well i found i saw an opportunity in sweet potato um that's why i uh, pursued sweet potato so the picture of bob is me with um farmers local farmers um this is uh this was like up in the mountains like uh, 800 meters above sea level, um, it's a farming area. And at the bottom, that was my first sweet potato warehouse. We built it in a, in a countryside with bamboos and wood, and, and that's what it looked like. That, this was the beginning of uh, the sweet potato business for me. Um, so I saw that, you know, Koreans love sweet potato, first of all. Koreans love sweet potatoes. and um, 
I saw that in Indonesia, um, there's this variety of sweet potato called jilimbu, which is uh, which in English is honey honeydew sweet potato. So basically, when you bake it, it drips honey. It drips this this sugar. Uh, yeah, the, the sweet sugar just just juice comes out from uh, this sweet potato when you bake it. So uh, around my third year in Indonesia, I saw a couple of companies exporting um, Indonesian sweet potatoes to uh, Singapore, Hong Kong, to Japan, and even to Korea. So um, I realized that there was an opportunity here. And uh, I found out that Korean buyers were getting fed up with the uh, inconsistency in quality of Indonesian sweet potato. And plus they had trust issues with uh, their Indonesian partners. Uh, so I figured that if I could provide sweet potatoes that are consistent in quality, and if I could keep my words, then I could take a significant portion of sweet potato market in Korea. Um, and, you know, it, it, of course, it wasn't as easy as it sounds, but um, we, we knew what we had to do, right? So um, we stick to it. And um, now you can see that my hair is very different from then, which, mean, which indicates my life has stabilized <laughs> since then. Uh, my sweet potato warehouse doesn't look like that anymore. Um, it has been updated or improved. Um, so upon my, well, upon my walk in the sweet potato business, um, an opportunity came up. I was, I was actually constantly looking for an opportunity to do something more with uh, Indonesian sweet potatoes. And um, this Samsung well story came up. Uh, Samsung, like you have a word Samsung, so you think it's a, something to do, do with the semiconductor or digital things. But um, no, Samsung Well Story is a, is a, I guess it's a subdivision, sub company of Samsung Electronics, the, the smartphones. Um, these guys, the Well Story, these guys run catering services for um, Samsung. Plus, they do whole other uh, catering services for other companies too. Um, so they, they have businesses in China and Vietnam. They run cafeterias and things like that. So um, through my network, I got introduced to Samsung Well Story, and with the help of a friend in an R and D department and uh, Samsung Well Story's advice, our team began to develop this product, something to do with sweet potato, something that could um, meet the demand of Korean consumers. And it was, it, was a, it was a complicated journey. We had to do a lot of market research and things like that. But um, I, I'm thankful because I knew an insider in Samsung Well Story and I knew an insider in R&D de, uh, department. So they were able, able to offer a lot of tips on uh, what kind of things that I should be looking for. So um, I realized upon the research We found out that Koreans, Korean consumers were very particular. Okay. Um, so we found out that Koreans were conservative or are conservative, still, they still are, and very well informed. They're very, very well informed. And uh, to satisfy them, we had to think about the key, these key aspects, as you see on the screen. So we had to think about the safety. You know, we had to come up with a product that is safe to consume. Um, so uh, certifications like HACCP uh, really matters for them. And the product has to have a consistently high quality because like I said, these guys, you know, um, they want something, they want to get the, what, you know, they want to get what they pay for. They want value for money. So if they're going to pay for a product that they don't have to buy, then we better give them something of a good quality. And a third aspect was joy of life, which just meant that, you know, the consumers, they must enjoy eating our product because it tastes good. And it also satisfies the value of value for money. Okay. Um, so we found out uh, what the consumers needed by searching um, all kinds of sweet potato related products. We searched everything. Like we, we 
tried as many products as we can. Uh, if it has sweet potato in it, then we wanted to try it. And we checked reviews on, of different products and, and we received advice from insiders, the r and department, Well Story. Um, and we came up with a product. We came up with a brand, which is this Well Ego brand. Okay. Um, and no, it's not a baby food. Okay. It literally, that, that's seriously like, what we came up with um okay but it might sound it might look like a baby food but it's not okay it's, it's very um it's very functional for koreans um so well legal brand the well legal real porridge that's the that's the actual name for this product and uh, so we uh, that was released um it has no sugar no additives and that's what it says, like, it's in Korean here, here, like, no sugar, no additives. Um, the concept was, you know, Koreans are, are busy people. Koreans are busy people. So what you do is you just open the cap and squeeze that content out of the pouch, eat as you go. And that might not sound very good in Europe, but it sounds perfectly fine in Korea and America. And um, we did not just the, not just the content, not just the recipe of the product, but we actually um, we actually thought about the the product design as well. Um, so the, for example, the the pouch, um, it's what we call retort pouch. Um, so there's a sterilization process, um, which is called retort sterilization. So with the contents inside the pouch you when, when it goes through this retort sterilization then you can store this product in a room temperature for like six to eight months you know and that's that if you think about normal sweet potato that's that's impossible because you, once you steam or bake sweet potato it's not going to last two days it's going to go off but with the retort sterilization process which is common which is very common uh sterilization sterilization process in like canning industry um so with that technology we were able to uh make a product that that can be stored in the room temperature so this was a retort uh, pouch product and also microwavable so it was a bpa free bpa free uh, pouch and the cap was also intentionally designed uh, bigger uh, for the safety of infants because we also targeted babies and infants um, well, actually, there are parents who would buy these products for their babies. Um, so we, we specifically designed this cap uh, on purpose, too, um, because we don't want babies to swallow the little cap and choke. Um, it was on, intentionally designed semi-transparent to, to show consumers what's inside. Okay. And it was sold for around 1.8 euros. Per pouch. I don't know how you how, how that comes to you, but that's considerably like high uh, price for Koreans, even for Koreans. Yeah. Okay. And like I mentioned before, we were targeting this product to the MZ generation. Okay, this was our market. And I think this will be your market too. Um, so these guys, MZ Generation, they know how to compare uh, the specification of food products. They know how to compare um, even the contents of the products. Like how much sweet potato did this product use? And what about the, the other, other guys? How much did they use? How, how, like this, if we use 65% of sweet potato and these guys use 70%, then these guys have more sweet potatoes inside. And if they are they are wanting a product that has more sweet potato in it, then they will go for the 70%. These guys know how to read the labels at the back. When they pick up the product, they will turn it around and look at the label at the back. Where is it from? What country is our origin? Um, does it have HESAP? What kind of certifications does it have? And they will look at these things. And they want something easy, convenient, but they're also very health conscious. 
that's what MZ generation is. Okay, so to target this generation, retort sterilized food, like I mentioned before, and frozen food products are widely consumed by this market. Um, there's a growing uh, market for home meal replacement or HRM in Korea. So these products are basically uh, instant food, but healthy and sterile, right? So there is a big market for HMR and that's what we targeted. That's what Well Eagle targeted. Um, these guys are willing to spend more uh, if they can receive value for money and Well Eagle actually fit perfectly into their um, that category because you know it, it satisfies their their desire to be healthy and it also reduces their time to prepare for their breakfast or lunch and if they were going to spend a little money on their snack because you know they're, they they need something for their afternoon tea or something then well legal uh, came became one of their choices it was a because you know you pay paying for a snack with or buying a well legal it would amount to the same uh, value for money. So these guys, MZ generation, they seek ledger and personal satisfaction um, uh, more than to stay safe in their career. Okay. Um, so these guys, these guys are willing to spend on the things that pleases them. They have that sentiment, but they're smart. So we can't sell them sentiment, right? <laughs> we, can't, we can sell them good product at good value convenient product and healthy product and they are willing to pay more for that okay if you can see in the picture like this is an example of an hmr okay retort retorted product so um the bottom picture here you can see these packages how it's how it shows the example of the uh, the product okay and this is this whole picture is how actually they they promote their product so they put it on like these nice dishes and look make it look like organic and, and these are not organic even but they make it look like organic they make it look natural they make it look healthy and it it just shows them it shows the MZ generation that these products are safe to consume they're like a proper homemade meal only easier but for that comfort you're going to pay a little bit more and they buy. And we were targeting this, this market, this very specific market. Okay. And how do we, how did we sell to these guys? We went through this uh, sales channels. Okay. Um, okay. So we like offline retails. So we have EMR 24, uh, GS 25, LOPS. Uh, I'll, I'll get back to all those soon. In e-commerce, e-commerce was coupon and gym chain was go to fitness. Um, I have an interesting story about the gym chain. Um, okay, so you guys have to understand that I practically grew up in New Zealand. I was only born in Korea. I, I moved to New Zealand when I was like ten. Okay, so um, when I'm in Korea, I'm kind of like a semi foreigner. I'm a semi-foreigner and I had, I really had no connections before in Korea because, you know, grow, I mean, I don't need to be focusing on building my network in Korea when I'm a teenager and things like that. Right. So only it's, it's only after I got into business world, I started building um, my networks in Korea. And interestingly, uh, my cousin, Lina's friend, classmate. Uh, <laughs> um, so we have, a, we have auntie. We have an auntie who is a very, very famous Pilates, Pilates yoga instructor in Korea. She's, uh, she's, she's top in her industry. Um, celebrities come to her to get trained. Um, she's a serious figure in Korean uh, fitness world. Um, so she runs this Pilates studio in Seoul and I thought this well ego product might really sell well to these people who are health conscious and who are fitness freaks, right? Who are, you know, I mean, the people who are, uh, who want to have a proper diet while they exercise and things like that, you know, that you, you got to control what you eat. So I thought uh, I could get 
help from my auntie who I have never met. I'm serious, like <laughs> who I have never met. Um, but of, of course I, I knew her and she knows me. So, um, so I asked uh, my cousin to help me out, to hook me up with auntie. So she took me to the studio my, my cousin took me to her to my auntie's studio and, and um, I met her, introduced myself, <laughs> saw her face for the first time in my life. Um, and then I, I showed her the product, well legal. And then she, she tasted it and, and she said she doesn't like sweet potatoes, but she, she believes that this product is really good. Like a lot of her, her students will want it. And well, I asked for help from my auntie, auntie, can you, can you maybe introduce me to people that you know, um, who might want to buy these products? And my auntie said, well, um, let's see what I can do. And she, she uh, contacted some people right away. And, and um, she said, you go see this person, okay? You go see this person, she's an organizer for the fitness exhibition, the biggest fitness exhibition in Korea, which is happening in like two weeks. Okay, you go see her right now. So after I left her office, I went to see that lady, which is which wasn't very far, just a few few stations train ride. And um, I saw that lady, and and she said, this lady said uh, she's going to get me a booth in the exhibition, we where we can present our products. And by the way, the booth was already closed. It was the registrations was you know was already closed. It's, it's, it was the biggest uh, fitness exhibition in Korea. So you know there's no way you could get a booth in two weeks time before the exhibition started, but we managed to get one. And so we were there and um, my auntie came and she, she took me to meet some people. And one of the people, the first person that she introduced me to, and, and that actually had ended up being the only person she introduced to me to, because it was the owner of this go-to fitness, uh, the gym chain. Um, and she basically, show this owner the well legal product and told him that look um this is my nephew's product and i wouldn't recommend it if it wasn't good but it's really good um so you should buy this you should put this in your chain and then the owner said if you say so then i will do that the series literally that's what he said like if you say so then i'm gonna do it <laughs> um right there right there he's like how much is this oh it's this much how much do I have to buy? Uh, we didn't really think of the minimum order, but uh, the more, the better, you know. Um, the guy said, okay, um, send me like this many boxes on Monday to this office because I'm going there for a meeting. I'm going to meet with my uh, branch managers there on that day. I'm going to show them this product and I'm going to get them to take these products and display it in our uh, fitness centers. And, and by the way, these guys, like you, these guys, I think still... They, they're the biggest um, fitness center, fitness uh, gym chain in Korea, still is. And I think they have about 1,000 chains throughout Korea. So um, it happened just like that. It went in. Uh, but if I was to go in by myself without this connection from my auntie, um, I don't think I would have ever got into this go to fitness because these guys are like, these guys are fitness giants in Korea, <laughs> okay? Um, so from there, from uh, after we got into Go to Fitness, we were able to use this reference to get into these different uh, chains like eMart, which is the biggest uh, supermarket chain in Korea, uh, which has 100, uh, 141 stores Korea-wide. GS25 is like um, what we call a convenience store. It's a small grocery store in your neighborhood. You know, Koreans have like these apartment blocks, right? I think it's kind of same in, in Shanghai as well. You have these apartment blocks and each like apartment block will have one GS25 or something like that. That's, that's how it looks like. It's a small, um, in New Zealand, we call these kind of shops dairy, dairy shops. I don't know what you call that in um, Lithuania, but small shops, small shops, uh, which sells essentials and, and snacks, simple food. Um, so we managed to get in there. Um, Lops is Korean version of Watson's. 
So it's a, it's a beauty store plus small gro grocery section on the side. Um, so usually these, uh, these shop, these kind of shops will have take, you know, they, they will sell these you know, high end uh, products, high end food products. They don't sell just everyday food products because, you know, people will go for, go for e-mart or, or other supermarket to get their groceries done. But these, these, uh, these shops sell these simple uh, food, high end food, because like ladies in their, you know, twenties and thirties, they shop in these places. So when they, when they drop by, they will get a piece or two of their cosmetic products and then they'll move to the food section. They'll grab something for their dinner or for their, for their snack from the food section. So um, that's, that was kind of good, uh, good place to have our product launched because it, it promoted our product to this MZ generation, the female MZ generation who we were really targeting. And, and e for e-commerce, uh, Coupon was, Coupon is the biggest, um, biggest online platform in Korea. Um, so we were just, we, you know, you could, it's one thing to put up your product online, but it's another thing to, to get appearance. You know, it's, it's one thing to put up your product online, but then it's another thing to get your target market to, to view your posting. Okay. Um, so we actually uh, worked with the professional e-commerce company. Um, so we, we actually pay them and we were able to generate a lot of traffic to, to our product. Um, we, pay, we did a lot of uh, paid endorsements, um, something that we could afford, of course. Uh, we did a lot of paid, um, paid, like we did paid Instagram endorsement, we did paid blog, uh, endorsement and things like that to generate the traffic for our online postings. Um, so yeah, that's, that's how we actually did, uh, in Korea in for sales channels. And I think they're, they're very relevant to you all because we are all targeting the same market, you know, same, same, uh, demographics, the MZ generation, um, and, and I think this, these are all very, very relevant for you. 